When trying to push a 3D printer, there's a multitude of factors that need to be taken into account. One that I never put much thought into until much later than I likely should have is what's beneath my printer. For feet, I just used any TPU or rubber ones that gave the printer a bit of grip, and for location, the only real consideration was if the machine could actually fit. This may have been fine with the speeds we were pushing 10 years ago, but that is no longer the case. The biggest example I have of this was running the same G-code on my X1 Carbon when I had it on a tall, wobbly cart resting on carpet versus on a storage rack sitting in the garage. Even with input shaping trying to compensate, the difference was substantial. Some of the newer Core XY printers come with large feet adapters to help isolate vibrations and help with things like machine wear. I tried out Bamboo Lab's official anti-vibration feet last year and was disappointed with how hard it was for them to stay and and keep them from buckling. This is why I was super excited to see the release of Hula, an omnidirectional anti-vibration foot created by Through the Frame. These feet are very different than the existing options out there and are adaptable to a wide range of printers. So in today's video, we'll be diving into Hula. We'll cover the details surrounding these feet as we go over what they are, how they work, and play around with them on a few different machines. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Thanks to Voxel PLA for sponsoring today's video. Used exclusively in a 150 machine print farm, they now offer 15 colors of PLA Plus and 5 colors of PETG Plus. Both are available at the low price of $16.99. This is an excellent choice for anyone needing reliable and affordable materials, even for more demanding applications. Filament performance is excellent even on high-speed printers. Bulk discounts are available along with free shipping in the US when you order three or more rolls. Voxel PLA also provides high-quality 3D printer upgrades, such as the Bento Box 2-stage filter and the Bamboo Lab AMS Hydra, along with many others. Check out the link in the description to voxelpla.com to find out more about their high quality affordable filaments and printer upgrades. Let's start by diving into some background on this project. Prototyping for Hula first began around mid 2023 and inspiration for the design came from seismic base isolators used on buildings and earthquake zones. While the standard rubber feet aim to minimize transferring some motor vibrations, Hula works to decouple the printer from the surface it sits on and dampen horizontal XY forces caused by rapid printer movements. Some of the drive for this project came from the disappointing experience with existing options out there. The sprained ankle syndrome of the official Bamboo Lab dampeners led to one design goal being self-centering feet. Hula's made of a few printed parts, a thrust bearing, and some fasteners. With the exception of the center core, all parts are recommended to be printed in PETG. For the dampener, the initial plan was to use EVA foam, but 95A TPU was decided on for the final design to improve accessibility. An F822 thrust bearing is used with the smooth side facing the bearing balls as rollers. This combined with the TPU core is what allows Hula to be omnidirectional. There's a bomb available for sourcing and building a set of Hula feet in the official manual. Through the Frame partnered with Voxel PLA on this project so you can buy fully assembled or hardware and TPU sets from them as well. These feet originally launched for the Bamboo Lab P and X series but has since expanded to the Creality K1 and K1 Max, Prusa Mark III and Mark IV, and the most recent being the A1 Mini and Vorons. The main difference between the versions lies in the top case. Each printer requires a fairly different design of that part to ensure that it mates correctly. Voxel PLA sent over the fully assembled Bamboo Lab X1, Creality, and Prusa versions, which is what we are looking at today. Attaching these onto the X1 Carbon was a piece of cake. You could probably install them fairly easily without putting the printer on its side, but it was much easier to show on camera this way. The stock feet are held in place with some light adhesive, so grabbing one edge and pulling on them will pop them right out. For the Hula feet, they are just friction fit in place. Depending on when you bought your printer, the mold may be slightly different, so there are shims included or that you can print if your fit happens to be too loose. Once the printer is standing again, lift the printer from the left side and then the right side to ensure the feet are aligned properly. 
For bamboo lab printers specifically, since we can't set the input shaper values manually, you'll want to make sure that you have the printer in its final location or where it's going to be, and you'll want to run input shaping with the stock feet. From Through the Frames testing, Hula's dampening and Bamboo Lab's input shaping methods would only increase ghosting, so you want to make sure you don't run it again after installing the feet. As for testing, a fair bit of data has been posted in the manual comparing the stock feet to Bamboo Lab's vibration dampening feet and Hula. The tests used to obtain the listed values in the table were ran five times and the averages are what is shown. For a step-by-step -step breakdown of how the tests were conducted, I highly recommend downloading the Hula manual. There's also an image showing the results using CNC Kitchen's ghosting test. This shows a slight surface improvement in the y-axis. In addition to this, a few videos were posted with side-by-sides so you can see a closer comparison. The test results do state that they are non-exhaustive and may not work for all printer setups, so I decided to run some tests with my printers. I was really curious to see what, if any, difference I would see in a ringing test, so I began with that on my X1 Carbon using the stock feet and then again with Hula. I've looked at these prints from just about every angle and I really can't see a difference between the two. If there is, it's extremely subtle and not something that you would easily notice. One of the main things I was curious about was just how different the vibrations would be translating from the printer to my workbench during a print. For this, I tried a handful of things. I started with the X1 Carbon and ran a perimeter and gyroid infill print at high speeds to create as many vibrations as possible. Using my iPhone on a stand right next to the printer and the Vibrometer app, I tracked the average and max vibrations it picked up for each print. I then ran the exact same tests, but with the K1 Max using Hula and the large stock feed adapters that ship with the printer. The only difference between the two tests was that I removed the quartz slab after I did my testing on the X1 Carbon. While the averages were 0 or 0 0.1 and matched with or without Hula, the max across the board was lower. The numbers I was getting from the app had less of a gap than I was expecting given the results I had seen in the manual. However, I soon discovered that the iPhone apps are using the highest temporary acceleration value as their unit of measurement, and the app used by both Bamboo Lab and Through the Frame is an Android app using the modified Mercalli intensity scale. So it was certainly not an apples to apples test and I was curious to see if the gap would be wider using the MMI scale. I ended up getting in a low cost Android phone to explore this a bit further and the results were not what I was expecting. I ran the K1 Max with stock feet, stock large feet and Hula through the same prints again. I was very surprised to see that having no feet at all showed the least amount of vibrations. Hula's max vibration with the infill test was 40% less than the big feet, but the bigger feet had a smaller max when running the perimeter test. I was also curious to see what input shaping test results would look like, so with the K1 Max, since it's running Clipper, I ran input shaping using the stock feet, the stock large adapter feet, and Hula, so for anyone interested, I will have the results for those on screen if you want to pause and take a closer look. My workbench is pretty rigid, so I wanted to run one more set of tests on something a little less stable. For for this, I went down to the garage, where I have the P1S on a muscle rack. Contrary to the name, these racks have quite a bit of sway in them. For this last test, I just ran the infill test, but I took the phone off of the phone stand for the second round. The stand I'd been using had some small grippy feet on the bottom, and I wanted to rule out any dampening that they might be doing. On the stand with stock feet, the results were a max of 0.4 and mean of 0.3. With Hula, the results were a max of 0.6 and a mean of 0.4. When I took the phone off the stand, it bumped up the numbers to a max of 0.9 and mean of 0.5 for both stock and Hula feet. The results I received on that final rack gave me way more questions than it did answers. One theory I have for why Hula may have gotten a higher number on the rack is due to the shelves. They're made up of particle board and although they are tough, it does allow for some flex. The stock feet on the Bamboo Lab printers are fairly soft, so if the surface is not 100% flat, it can sink into it a bit. With Hula, although it has a TPU cap, it sits right onto the surface, so if it's not flat, it could have created a bit of additional movement. Based on the results from the iPhone, Hula beat out the stock feet. However, the Android phone was a mixed bag. Could it be that the sensor in the cheap Android phone was just inaccurate? Possibly, but without buying additional phones, I had to conclude the test with what I had. The results are much less conclusive than what I would have liked, but there have been many times where this has been the case. 
Hopefully it at least gave you some things to consider and I would love to hear test results from anybody else that decides to try out Hula. With so many printers that have the option to use this feat and so many different surfaces, I'm sure some other results will be much greater. It really makes me wish I had held on to one of my good old lac tables. And that has been Hula. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer at least some of the questions that you maybe had. For anyone who wants to find out more, I'll have a link to the project in the description, as well as a link to Voxel PLA, where you can grab both the pre-assembled or the TPU and hardware kits. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a new video just about every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you want to support the channel further, I will have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.